Hello, and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. We've got a very special friend of the family uh, back again today with us to educate us on things we absolutely need to know. But first, housekeeping, please take out your cell phone and text the message TRUTH in the message box, T-R-U-T-H, and send it to the number 88202, push send. It'll automatically subscribe you to our text message alert system. You'll see this show and all of our others absolutely for free in the palm of your hand on your cell phone. Did you do it? Thanks. Let's bring on Robert Spencer. Robert Spencer is the founder of Jihad Watch. It is the source for jihad, not only around the world, but especially here in the United States. He's the editor of Jihad Watch. He is the author of some two dozen books. He is the man to ask. He is our scholar on jihad, and we welcome you back today, Robert. Always good to talk to you, Barry. Thank you. Let's jump right in, shall we? Uh, the belligerence of Iran internationally, and especially vis-a-vis -vis the United States, is growing weekly. Uh, they antagonize everybody in the Middle East, in their region, and it has grown tremendously since Biden took office. Um, they are supposed to rejoin the talks uh, to re-enter the JCPOA, the Iran nuclear deal. But just ahead of that, they have a monster military exercise going on in the Gulf of Oman. Uh, they have ships, they have planes, they have manned aircraft and special forces, they have defensive and offensive missile systems, and they're flying the Israeli flag in the background of the videos they're putting out. What is their intent to fly the Israeli flag? What message are they sending? Well, the message is very clear that what these war games are intended to do is to, are, uh, to prepare the uh, Iranian military for their ultimate operation that will be directed toward destroying Israel altogether. That's why they are practicing, and that's the message that they want to send. This is all about their genocidal rhetoric to destroy Israel that they have been repeating for years. And now because they see the Biden administration is weak, they are emboldened and so they're stepping it up. It's a full scale war game and it presages further aggression on the part of the Islamic Republic in the near future. If you had to make a prediction, Robert, is it gonna go beyond war games? Oh, sure, eventually it will. The Islamic Republic of Iran has considered itself to be on a war footing with Israel ever since it was founded in 1979, and with the United States as well. And the uh, problem is, of course, that the Iranians are not idiots. They know that they would probably lose in a military confrontation with either one of those. However, now with our woke and useless military, our kind of laughably ridiculous military in the United States and the Biden administration's increasing hostility to Israel, Iran sees its chance and may well take it. Oi, you, you wrote an interesting article in your publication, Jihad Watch, which just astounded me. And I want our viewers to hear about it. You talked about Palestinian women are now being honored for their role as terrorists. The National Palestinian Women's Day just took place and the PA Minister of Women's Affairs, Amal Hamad, highlighted female martyrs and mass murderers as proof that there's gender equality in Palestinian society. In other words, they have these various events where women have blown their, themselves up, have killed lots of Israelis like uh, Dalal Maghrabi, who killed 37 Israeli civilians, in, including 12 children in 1978. And because they blow themselves up, as I understand it, that makes them equal. I mean, except for the part about the husbands can beat them and uh, have numerous wives and force them to cover up and genital mutilation. I mean, forget all that stuff. But in terms of equality, if they die trying to kill Jews, they're equal. Is anybody buying this? Well, you know, they believe it because they celebrate these people as heroes. And if you were to go to Gaza or to the Palestinian Authority holdings in Judea and Samaria, you would see that 
the jihad terrorists who have murdered Israeli civilians are uh, up on posters on the wall and are taught in schools as heroes. And uh, it's kind of ridiculous that this is some now, now being held up as a sign that the Palestinians believe in gender equality. But as far as they're concerned, that's really what it is, that they celebrate female murderers as well as male murderers. So see, women have rights. Uh, it's ridiculous, of course, in light of how the, your allusion to the wife beating, to uh, the other aspects of Islamic law that deny equality of rights to women. Uh, but it's also likely that Western leftists will fall for this because they have always been unwilling to confront the plight of women in Islamic law. It's very clear that the idea of multiculturalism and respect for Islam and the fear of so-called Islamophobia trumps any real concern for women's rights. And so this is likely to be no different. Well said. And the stupidity and the ignorance around the world in regards to this subject matter is just discouraging. There is some good news. Uh, Republican senators in the United States have reintroduced uh, the Muslim Brotherhood Terror Act. Um, the draft bill is now out and has sparked a huge controversy uh, because the senators, Cruz and Inhofe and Johnson, are leading this move in the Senate to designate the Muslim Brotherhood a terror organization, which it is in most countries around the world. But for some reason in the United States, holding these people accountable for their terror around the world seems to be inappropriate, I guess. Um, they want to withhold $130 million in military aid to Egypt, um, they being the opponents, because they want Egypt, the opponents of this bill, to release mother Muslim Brotherhood terrorists from Egyptian jails. Who's on the right path here? Well, you know, the Muslim Brotherhood terrorist designation is never likely to pass because there is so much Muslim Brotherhood alliance and infiltration in the American government. Remember that a few years ago, uh, former Congresswoman Michelle Bachman introduced a uh, bill to compel the United States to examine and investigate Muslim Brotherhood infiltration into the US government. And she was denounced on the Senate floor by John McCain, denounced by the establishment media as Islamophobic and racist. And there was never any investigation. But meanwhile, an Egyptian paper Rosa El Youssef, in the, at the end of 2012, at the time that the Muslim Brotherhood regime was in power there, actually was celebrating the fact that there were Muslim Brotherhood operatives in the US government that had turned the US around from being hostile to the Brotherhood to being favorable to it. Now, those people are still in place and still in power. Remember that Joe Biden, last summer when he was doing his uh, facsimile of a presidential campaign, appeared on Zoom at a Muslim Brotherhood linked organizations conference and promised that Muslims would be appointed to every uh, level of his administration, given the fact that it's people connected to Brotherhood linked organizations like the Council on American Islamic Relations and the Islamic Society of North America who are guiding those appointments. He was just saying essentially that he'd be putting more Brotherhood operatives in the government. Now, with Brotherhood operatives in the government and their allies in the government, how are you going to get the Brotherhood designated a terrorist organization? So I applaud the reintroduction of the bill, but it doesn't have a chance. <sighs> Discouraging to say the least. Speaking of terror organization, the Palestinian Authority uh, and its military arm, Fatah, has been under orders uh, from Chairman slash dictator for life, Mahmoud Abbas, to build embassies all over the world. They built about a hundred of them. Uh, the new one in Tunisia has just opened and there's a huge monument in front of the new embassy in Tunisia that has a map of Palestine, except it's the map of Israel, but it's labeled Palestine. So the official governmental authority for the Palestinians is saying there is no Israel, there is only Palestine, and it's our country. Is it 
any surprise that Israel does not have a peace partner when they are the designated representative, they are the organization Israel is supposed to be negotiating a permanent peace treaty with, and yet they deny the existence of the state of Israel. Is that a good peace partner? Well, you're right, Barry. This is uh, part of the cognitive dissonance of the American government. Uh, Barack Obama in his first two terms and now in his third term have <laughs> insisted that the uh, Palestinian Authority led by Mahmoud Abbas was the peace partner for the Israelis, never acknowledging the repeated genocidal rhetoric and absolute intransigence of Abbas and other Palestinian Authority leaders in calling for the total destruction of Israel, in making it very clear that not only did they want Israel destroyed, but that no Jew would live in a Palestinian state, and they're the peace partners. And so it's very clear why there's no peace. It's all on the side of the Palestinians and their intransigence that comes from the jihad doctrine, drive them out from where they drove you out, which is in the Quran, chapter two, verse 190. This is the complete all encompassing obstacle to peace that makes all of the negotiations an empty exercise. And quite frankly, as a, as a parting thought, the word from the territories, the Palestinian territories is if Abbas ever would become a little bit conciliatory before he dies, um, they'll kill him. So he's between a rock and a hard place, so to speak. Robert, tell our viewers today where they can follow you and read your stuff. Yeah, I'm at jihadwatch.org online and jihadwatchrs on Twitter. There is a Facebook page if you can find it, but it's very hard because Facebook doesn't want you to know about the nature and magnitude of the jihad threat today. Thanks for coming on. We so, so appreciate your wisdom. And for everybody out there in ATP land, please follow Robert Spencer. He says things you need to know. And I hope you took my advice and my request at the beginning of this segment to sign up for our text message alert system. You know how to do it. Just text the word truth and send it to 88202, push send. You'll be signed up for free. We never charge for content. And you'll see all of our stuff like the brilliant Robert Spencer in the palm of your hand. For ATP Report, thanks for joining us today. I'm Barry Newsbaum.